Hi, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Beginning Investors Group online webinar. My name is Dustin Griffin. I'm your host tonight. The Beginning Investors Group is an online educational group for new investors who are just getting started in the business, as well as new again investors who may have taken some time off and are getting back into the game of real estate investing. Uh, the entire purpose of this group is to help you get your first deal or your next deal and to provide a constant source of real estate investing education for you, no matter where you live, no matter what part of the country you're in. So I'm really excited to have my good friend here tonight with me, who I'll introduce here in just a minute. I do wanna let you guys know we are broadcasting to our RIA groups around the country, uh, in Atlanta, Atlanta RIA, Tampa RIA, Savannah RIA, Chattanooga RIA and Charlotte RIA and anybody else out there who may be tuning in and watching us around the country or around the globe. We appreciate y'all being here with us tonight. Also, a lot of people ask me, how do they watch our replays? You can watch our replays on two places. You can watch them on uh, YouTube at bigo.co. It's there on your screen, bigo.co slash YouTube, bigo.co slash YouTube. And you can watch a playlist of all the past webinars we've done here in the past six months or so. And I've also uploaded them to Facebook. You can go to bigo.co slash replays, bigo.co slash replays. And that'll redirect you over to our Facebook page. Same thing for YouTube. If you use this shortcut, it'll take you to our page on YouTube where you can watch these replays. So in the next day or two, I'll put, uh, I'll edit this recording and put it up on YouTube for you if you had to uh, cut out early or something. So I'm really excited to have my good friend Duncan Weirman here with us tonight. He's going to be talking about how to double your rental income without tenants and how simple it is to start your own vacation rental business. Now, Duncan's been with us many times in the past and talked about internet marketing and search engine optimization and how to generate leads online. This is uh, not a new topic to Duncan, but it's definitely a new topic to many of our RIA groups that he has not talked with us before about. He did recently visit us down at Tampa RIA and talked about this very subject, and I loved it. He also did a half-day workshop with us down there, and I was so excited to hear this information. I wanted to get him booked on a webinar as soon as possible to share this information with you, because many of us out there are in parts of the country where vacation rentals could potentially work very well. For example, Savannah, Georgia, Tampa, Florida, right there on the coast, Atlanta, we've got all kinds of great tourist attractions, Chattanooga, Tennessee, up in the mountains, as well as Charlotte, North Carolina. Lots of things to do up there as well. And possibly wherever you're living right now. And Duncan's gonna talk about tonight about the vacation rental business. He's specifically gonna focus on Airbnb and talk about how easy it is to get started, a lot easier than you might have thought, and how to get started creatively without having to have a lot of cash or credit. So Duncan, welcome to the webinar tonight, my friend. I appreciate you being here. Man, I love talking about this topic. It, it's really going to change a lot of people's real estate investing outlook um, for a couple different reasons. If they're struggling finding deals and or their deals aren't cash flowing, uh, getting into Airbnb without owning any property and making a ton of cash flow or, you know, converting their long-term tenants um, rentals into short-term ones to make more cash flow um, or just not having to deal with tenants at all anymore. Uh, it really can change your outlook on life and real estate investing because it's fun and it's pro and very profitable. Yep, and Duncan, like I said, did this talk down in Tampa recently and really opened my eyes up to the business and I'm looking forward to doing this myself and I have not yet. Uh, one of the things he talked about down there was how you can buy these houses creatively, like we always have using lease purchases, lease op op options, master leases, subject to owner financing without having to have a lot of cash up front and then rent these things out via Airbnb at a pretty good occupancy rate. I think one of the numbers you were quoting was like 85, 87% occupied. Right. Well, they'll make money at a 50% occupancy rate, but we're finding in areas, you know, like Tampa, Orlando, Los Angeles, you no know, Charlotte, 
Um, th those areas run like 80% occupancy rate, which means you're going to make a ton of money. Exactly. So as many of you know, um, when you have a mortgage on a house and you're renting it out, you got to pay the mortgage and all that first. And you may be lucky to have a $300 a month positive cash flow. So everything over and above that $300 a month positive cash flow is just extra. So if you could double your normal monthly rent, you get your normal $300 a month cash flow, then everything else over and above that is gravy. And uh, I was really excited to hear some of the things Duncan's doing down in Orlando. That's where he's broadcasting from right now. He's down in Orlando. He's uh, also taken over a lot of people's timeshares. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you can see me yet, but I took over to another two this past week, so um, these have to be recorded yet. Um, but yeah, this is a a, a great business. It and really we, is. We can definitely see you. And uh, since we swapped over this go to or this uh, Zoom webinar, I really like it. If you guys want to zoom in on, like, say, Duncan's video, you can click on his um, thumbnail, and he'll get big. And click it again, and his presentation will get big. So speaking of his presentation, uh, as he starts talking about the vacation rental business, you're probably going to have a lot of questions. You, at least you should. And you can send them in via the Zoom Q&A interface. If you want to just say, hi, how you doing, you can use the chat interface. But it's just like a long list of people saying hello or whatever. If you want to make sure your uh, questions get answered in the order they come in, use the Q&A interface. And if you'll look up there on your taskbar, you'll see it. You can open it up and send in questions throughout the entire webinar. I'm going to collect those questions. And whenever Duncan's ready for me to start asking him questions, I'll feed them to him. So, Duncan, are you ready to get started? I am. Let me get my screen here. You can just take it from me. Uh, you're ready. Yep. And as soon as you get started, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic and hide my video. Sorry Alrighty. for interrupting you. There we go. So, um, you should see this now, hopefully. Yep, they can see your screen and they can see our thumbnails. So it looks like Excellent. we're ready to go. All so, right, so. Again, man, I really appreciate you being here tonight. I, I really appreciate you uh, sharing this exciting topic. And this is the beginning investors online webinar. So a lot of the folks watching are new. And this is probably, uh, we've probably all heard about Airbnb. We probably all stayed in one or thought about staying in one. But I'm, I'm excited that you're going to be sharing with them how easy it is to, uh, to get started in this Airbnb business and double your rental income without all the tenants and toilets and headaches that are normally associated with rentals and that $300 a month cash flow. So I appreciate you. Here. Take it away, my friend. All right. Good deal. Uh, so in my business, I was totally tired of tenants. I was tired of paperwork rate, uh, late rent, and that's what led me on my journey to get into Airbnb, you know, and really have maximized my income. So what I'm gonna to share tonight are just a few of the secrets to making a six-figure income. And you really only need four to five properties that, um, that's actually all you need to make $100,000 a year. So. Uh, it's very simple, a couple hours a week, four or five houses, and that will give you a $100,000 plus net income. So this is very real. I'm going to back it up with some numbers. So I am a super host on Airbnb. I am a brand ambassador for Airbnb. Uh, I don't work for them, but Airbnb um, allows me to promote some special offers. They do uh, because they know how many people I'm helping around the country. So, um, you know, I know what I'm doing here. So what is Airbnb? Uh, there are similar sites to it. You might have heard of VRBO, Nine Flats, Booking.com, Flipkey. Uh, those sites are similar. However, they lack some features and functionalities that Airbnb does have. And for the sake of this talk, I'm going to stick to Airbnb only. And I want to give you the reasons why I would suggest that you do the same to begin with. And number one is payment processing. You don't have to worry about foreign exchange. You don't have to worry about collecting credit cards because Airbnb does all that. They do all the customer service in regards to, you know, if the, you know, credit card declines, you don't have to have your own credit card machine. You don't have to worry about adding extras in there. Airbnb will take care of that. Airbnb has such good worldwide marketing. I mean, they 
do marketing so well, they really are the Google of the short-term rental world. So you want to you know, piggyback on that to get your properties exposed to everybody who wants to stay in a house. The great thing about Airbnb is it's free to list. Other sites charge you some money if you want premium positions. I don't like that. Uh, your address is totally private until the um, property is booked, so nobody can see what you're doing. You have robust calendaring features, so it's not going to allow you to get double booked. So you can book rooms, you can book a whole space, you can book other types of things also. And it has reviews. Uh, reviews that are two ways. So not only can people review you like the other sites, but now you can review the guest which means if you have a bad guest, you review them. And nobody wants to be a bad guest uh, because they want to use the system again. So you have people that are always going to be on their best behavior for the most part. And then um, the other thing I like is you can rent any type of room or space. You can't do this on other sites. So if you have a tent, you have an RV, you have a room, you have a yurt, uh, you have a castle, uh, you can rent anything on Airbnb where a person can stay, a treehouse even. So uh, it gives you a lot of different opportunities. So I prefer Airbnb. Uh, and what we're going to learn on the next uh, 60 minutes is this, how to get started within seven days and make money fast, even if you don't own any property now, how to maximize you make more money than everybody else is making on Airbnb, and how to do this working only two hours a week. So this really is an ideal business that's going to keep forming, having you make cash flow. Now, this is the same presentation I did in Tampa, and I want to. And before I move into any area, I like to do the research. So it is a great time to seize the opportunity. And in the course, and there is going to be a special offer at the end of my talk. You know, we teach you how to do the research. But I just give you an example in Tampa. You can see that there's four, over 1,400 rentals right spread all over across Tampa, an average daily rate of, you know, this top part here, I really don't get concerned about because, um, you know, the the numbers really will change in the, um, in the niche zip codes and margins, but they're looking pretty good. You're looking, you know, even here as a generality in the market, you're looking at 87% occupancy rate, you know, making 2,700 off a property that, you know, you might be only renting for $1,200 a month. So you see there's a huge rental demand. This is all good indicators that I'm going to make a lot of money. You know, people are renting out entire homes, private rooms, and a few in shared rooms from studio apartments all the way up to five-room houses. You know, the type of houses I like to do are larger type of homes, especially here in Orlando because I pick up whole families vacationing. But we also go after the corporate side of things where you need a studio or one bedroom and I, you know, in my old days of real estate investing, I would never buy a studio or one bedroom because nobody wanted it. They're hard to read. Now these make great cash flowing Airbnbs for the corporate market. And we take a look here at how the market is growing. Now this, this, these two top symbols show us what the activity is. So what's available and what's actually booked. So this, this gives me a little bit of insight to market where this section here on the right is one months one to three, and then it's four to six. Uh, and all area are the people who are booked year round. So that's why you really need a course in my help is teach you how to get into this small area here, considering how available other places are. So we have some good occupancy, but we can really improve upon it. And that's why the tips and tricks I'm going to teach you. I look at the competition. Out of those 1,400 people, well, 870 of them are super host. Well, that means i got to do better than them, plus improve the occupancy. Now, people that have multiple listings, obviously they're making money. And there's a large segment only with one property. And they, these people are probably only making a part-time income. Um, may, might be a shared room, what have you. But you can see there's a lot of professional hosts. So with this basic research, I can see now an indication of the market, definitely to make money. I can see how much competition I have, which means I can set up a business to beat them. I can see what they're doing so I can beat them. And I'm going to tell you some ways in this, of course, in my course. But for the Tampa market, only 60% of those hosts are making a part-time income. We want to be making a, a, a full-time income. 
So I want you to take very good notes tonight using the method tips and tricks and the systems I'm going to show you to a way you can play style people dream about with only four to five houses. All right, so let's dig into this. I'm going to show you some samples. So this is net income. This was a whole house we started out with called Lemon Farms. It's a two-bedroom, two-bath. Our first year in business, we netted $38,000. It's after our mortgage payment. This is a four-bedroom house that we set up as an Airbnb. We netted $50,000 out of this. So we're already up to $75,000 with two houses. This was a duplex lock-off. Had a host living once so and rented out the other, uh, 27000 And then this one is a timeshare we put onto Airbnb. A uh, one week with a bonus week, we made uh, $8,779. And remember, our timeshare only costs us $1,000 a year. So there's a huge increase on what we can make versus what we paid for that. So very easily, $100,000 in our first year with only four properties and a timeshare. Um, one of my students in New York City, however, um, this is in New York City. This is uh, one of my students with five rentals, and it was only August, already paid out $122,000. This is my student in New York, first month, $20,000. Thousand dollars. So I hope by now the light bulb is going off sort of income you can make from this. So let's begin to make some money. So I have some coupons here for you. Now I have to read the article on this site. This is a blog. I wrote it. How to travel for free on Airbnb. Okay. And we're going to use some coupons. So there's a $40 coupon and a $50 coupon. The $40 coupon is when I suggest to you, before you get in this business, go stay at an Airbnb to see what it's about, get a feeling, talk to the person, see what they're doing, et cetera. So there's $40 for you to go stay in that on your very first visit. And then when you become a host, they will give you 50 extra dollars on top of your current nightly rate that you choose because they want to reward you for becoming a host. So you got to go to airbnbupdates.com. It is a blog, so you have to read the article to find the links. But if you do that, you will get uh, the, the link, uh, the coupons. So we have five rental strategies, okay? And in the five rental strategies, we can rent out individual rooms in one house to a different guest. We can rent out all We rent out other people's property, meaning we don't own it. Renting out your timeshare which is a very inexpensive get into this business and make tenfold your, your, uh, your maintenance fee. And there's property and reservation management services where a landlord would pay you anywhere from $500 to $2,500 to set them up on Airbnb. And he gets 80% of the income and you get 20%. We go for 25, but at least 20% you should get is easy peasy. So we have five different strategies. So anybody can do Airbnb even if they have no property whatsoever, and um, you can get going easy within seven to 30 days. So I wanna talk about the first one, which is our vacation rental blueprint model, which is the bed and maybe breakfast business model. Now, we have large houses. We have an on-site host that lives in that property. So in a five bedroom house, we have a host that lives in one of the rooms. Um, this could be a young couple, it could be an elderly person. They, provide security for us, but the other thing is they provide the greeting, the cleaning, and the restocking services. They also will maintain the breakfast bar if you so choose to do it. So this is more air with your um, vacation uh, air bed or your bed breakfast model. Now, the secret to this is renting out room by the night okay that's going to double or triple your rental income so as i go through this, let's give you some examples if you have room in your house and you put a roommate in there you would probably charge them let's say five hundred dollars stay with you if you divide that by person is living with you for only sixteen dollars and sixty seven cents a day very annoying to have a roommate that's only paying you $16.67 a day. So rather, we want to do something, okay, is that if you have $500 room rental, I'll take that $500 and we say, well, it's $50 a night. And if you multiply that by 30 nights, you have a potential income on Airbnb of $1,500. 
So you've really pulled that income, and that's great. So you could either choose to pay, you know, have a, a long-term roommate for seventeen dollars a day, or a short-term rental for fifty dollars per night. Let's Okay, on a safety number. So if we know that 50 occupancy rate is the worst you can possibly do, okay, that's the worst you can possibly do, uh, then number divide it in half. So we're taking our $1,500 and a 50% occupancy rate. We're going to get $250 more than the 500 Plus, you don't have to put up with an annoying roommate. Plus, um, you know, you're not available to you more. So, here's what happens that, we, that we's happening. Is that rooms hold more than one people. And people um, come together. And the first guest would be, uh, but if they had more guests in that room, let's say you had two queen beds in there, and would hold four guests, you know, you for those five guests. If you did that for 30 nights, that would be $2,700 just for one room. So we can add additional cost to those people for staying in that room. We just don't run out the room. It's per person. So um, I want to address high turnover. You see people coming and going. Okay. Um, high turnover is a good thing because on top, of the roommate of the room rate you always charge a cleaning fee and that becomes another income stream so i want you to understand that renting by the month to long-term tenants you're locking yourself into the lowest income possible and limit you're out with total and income so this is the better way. So this is one of the first houses we started out with. It was the Lemon Tree Farms. That's our title of our property. That's what we call it because there's a lemon tree in the front yard. And this was a two-bedroom, two-bath home. It was it was uh, rented out at $1,200 per month. It had a nine twenty on it. Okay, we had terrible tenants in there who were small, and it totally destroyed the house. I'll becomes a tenth of that per night, $120 per night, which tends to be $3,600 per month with this property. Okay? Now, we didn't have, because we had to make this house rent room ready again, uh, rent ready again, um, we outfitted everything off of Craigslist. We just did a very basic. Here we put two queen beds and both bedrooms, kept it very basic, okay, but enough to attract people. So this house now can tip now with two beds in it, can sleep up to eight guests with two bedrooms. Two people on a bed, two beds, we can say it can sleep up to eight guests. That's what needs to happen. Here's, here's another picture of the living room, furnished right off of Craigslist. So it's $20 a night up to four guests. Now, I want you to remember that bonus technique I showed you earlier. Anybody over what we can accommodate the room for originally is $10 per guest uh, after that minimum. So in this case, we had a minimum of four, $10 per guest after the first four. So $120 a night plus 10 after the first four. People came and stayed in this house and they came in groups of seven and eight people. So our first month, we made $3,777. The light bulb went off in our head. Why do we have long-term tenants when we can make more money with short-term tenants? Okay? So you do have some additional expenses, so I just want to show you what our end-of-the-year end figures were. So every month we budget gas, electricity, internet, cable, water, and fresh. That comes up to about $340 a month. We had our $3,600 new rent as a vacation rental minus our previous rent with our mortgage payments. So I'm taking all the expenses out of it for the mortgage. 
That meant I had a $2,400 total increase in rent. I knock out my utilities, which takes it down to $2,060 monthly income. I times that by 12. We netted $24,720 a year off of this house from a house that wasn't even cash flowing after all the um, said and done with bad tenants the year prior. That's huge, guys. That's huge. So that's a very powerful cash flow system. Let's take a look at another option. We do not own this property. You can see in the picture it says for rent. This house is around the corner from one of our other Airbnbs. It's a rainy day in Los Angeles. I don't even live in Los Angeles and we have this property. You can do this business anywhere. It doesn't matter. Okay? This is a straight rental. Okay? We keep the profits for ourselves. This was an older lady who was tired of people not paying her rent in time and destroying her house. She had this, uh, now if you're going to do this, just quick here is you have to make sure if you're going to do a straight rental that it's okay to have overnight guests who can stay less than 30 days and it's okay to sublet, okay? So you have three ways to run it. There's a vacation rental, bed and breakfast, or you can assign a property caretaker. Uh, we do now have a, a budget for each um, house we do at a $1,000 per room setup cost, okay? So um, our usual process is this. In month one, we have our setup cost. Month two is break even. Month three is all profit. And away we go. So this is not scary at all. So here is the house on a nice day in Los Angeles. This house is a three-bedroom, two-bath front house. It had a one-bedroom, one-bath converted garage okay, and a one-basement with two bunk beds. Great. I had a lot of potential to make money here. This lady only wanted $2,200 a month for this property for rent. We went in there and said, we will pay you $2,500 a month for this property. We want it as a corporate rental, okay? And we have our $350 utility cost. So I'm into this property monthly at $2,850. No big deal because I know, remember, I'm going to put a a host in this property to look after it and they pay a reduced rent. In this case, we put a young starter couple into this house, newly married, who are going to pay us $750 in rent. In LA, that's good. They can live in this property and they're going to pick up the ability to make money by doing the greeting, the cleaning, and the restocking services. So I have I know I can make $1,000 per room at a 50% occupancy rate. I know I have four rooms I can rent out, which means I have $4,000 plus I have the $750 rent uh, coming in. So I can make at a 50% occupancy rate, $4,750 per month. Minus my expenses means it leaves me with a $1,900 per month cash flow for a property I do not own. Guys, that's huge, okay? So, it's a win-win situation. The lady who won the rent house, she wanted somebody to pay her rent on time and to maintain her property. It was, it's a, definitely a win-win for the people who stayed in the house, for the host, win-win for the guest, and it's a win-win for me. So, very easy to do. Now, many of you um, are worried about some of the things that can go wrong, and that's why we have the course. Okay, because if you don't have rules and you don't manage your risk, things can go wrong. So, again, I'm going to go over some of those risks and what you can do to mitigate them besides get our course. Um, so, let's go into this. People aren't comfortable having strangers in your house. I can understand that. So, if you have a house, rent a room with a private entrance, duplex, live in a half and rent the other one out or get a house with a mother-in-law suite or a guest house on their property. And in our course, we have screening rules. We have 10 screening rules and three questions. If they don't answer the three questions or you can't check off the 10 screening rules, they don't get in the property. So we mitigate the risk having strangers in our house and we read the reviews of who they are and we check them out. So no, no fear here. Your guests are Vacationing usually travel from around the world. Uh, they can be from another state, another county. But if they come from the same county, they don't get in your house. Corporate guests, 
these are business travelers. They're attending a conference or meeting. They come and go. They're mostly at the convention. You don't even really see these people much. You know, they have a definite date and purpose for being in your city. Now, if you want to get into people who are relocating, I do suggest you that they already have a job lined up. They have a move-in date for their new property because we do want to stay within our, our guidelines of a three-day minimum stay and a 21-day maximum stay. And we'll explain that later. But you need to ask three questions to all your guests. Okay, where are you coming from? Who are you traveling with? And what are you going to be doing in town? And, um, and they need to answer these because if they're in the same county as you are, they're not getting in the property because that just is a red flag. Hey, there's a party. Who are you traveling with? I want to know every single person they're traveling with. And what are you going to be doing while you're in town? Well, I want to protect my property. Maybe I can help them out in giving them some guidelines. Okay? But I'm going to tell you, your guests are not people who are in a motel. Okay? They're not having relationship problems. They're not going to do parties. And certainly, they're not going to be filming a low-budget movie. All right? So screening rules are important. People who have financial problems. You know, I had somebody call me up. Hey, the government just gave me a voucher to go stay in a place because I need help. No, they're not bringing their drama into my house. All right, so we have a, we, we, when we turn somebody down, I want you to write this down. We say, I am sorry, I'm unable to accommodate you at this time. Again, I will say it again. I am unable to accommodate you at this time and full stop, don't say anything else because you want to stay clear of, you know, any sort of bias. Um, but we don't have long-term guests. We don't want to get into landlord-tenant law, three-day minimum. 21 day maximum because after 21 days people start getting uh, entitled. They want to use their television remote. It's their refrigerator. That's what we don't want. Okay. I'll say, what if I steal things? Well, chances are very low that they will take anything, but I'm going to suggest don't leave valuables laying around. And Airbnb, however, does give you a host guarantee that covers theft and vandalism up to a million dollars. Now, of course, you're going to have to file a police report and make a claim. You are protected. But let's not be silly and leave valuables laying around. But I've never in all my years had anybody anything. Okay, so what happened if a guest gets hurt on the property? Well, just like a landlord, you should have liability insurance, renter's insurance. But Airbnb does give you a million-dollar liability policy. Okay, so uh, you got it covered up to a million dollars, but you know your homeowner's policy will protect you probably for another million, but make sure you take measures to protect your home as safe as possible. So we don't allow little kids in our house. So if we have a two-story home as an example and there's stairs, we tell them it's not child safe house. So again, you know, proper screening and, and uh, risk protection. Uh, so you do have a trifecta of safety. You have the host guarantee for theft and vandalism. You have the coverage for injury up to a million dollars. And you can also ask for a security deposit. Matter of fact, you must ask for a security deposit. So when somebody comes to stay in your property, let's say it's a room, it's a $50 security deposit. If it's a whole house, let's say it's $200 up or even more. Because that way, if they break something, you have that there. Uh, just like a hotel does, they call it for incidentals, but it's really a security deposit in case you break anything. And then they have this other cool thing called the resolution tool. Well, let's say you have a key and they walk away with it. Instead of taking it out of their security deposit, you can, you can ask for it via the resolution tool. It passes through to you immediately and no money comes out of it. It's just given right to you to address uh, that little issue. So a lot of ways to make sure you're always protected. Uh, now, a lot of people say, well, my local laws say I can't. Well, re go read the laws, okay? Um, pay your taxes, stay within your guidelines, respect your neighbors, and even if it says it can't, you know what? Find where you can, because in LA County, there's 99 cities. 11 of the cities in LA County say you cannot do Airbnb, it's banned, don't even think about it. That's fine. I have 88 other places in LA County I can go. So focus on the opportunity. Make sure your neighbors are respected. You know, stay within your laws, do whatever it takes. But Airbnb is all over the place. The research shows it. 
So, I mean, you can be negative or you can be positive. There's always a way to do it if you're going to be legit. So, um, maybe your property isn't in a good location. Doesn't matter. Okay, people are tired of the same cookie cutter hotel approach. They're looking for an experience. So as long as you're within 30 mile radius of hot spots, you'll do just fine. Okay, people don't mind driving a half hour to something. And if you're providing them value and an experience, they will come. So um, you can check out some examples of hot spots by going to this site called Mash Visor, like Mash Potato, Mash Visor, uh, like advisor without the AD, MashVisor.com. And it actually goes and tells you, here's the hot spots in this part of town. Here's what their occupancy rates are. Here's how it is for Airbnb. Here's how it is against a uh, traditional long-term rental. So no excuses to really is there. Okay, tells you what they're doing. You can go into this and see what they're all doing before you get into it so you can do it better. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter, again, what type of property you have. You've got an RV laying around, a boat laying around, your tree house, igloo, I don't care. Put it on Airbnb. People are going to come and rent the darn thing. The thing with you is you got to become a super host because you got to provide wow. Super hosts have the excellent reputations and they're going to get the reviews, and it's the reviews that build your business. And if you don't get the reviews, you're not going to get the business. That's why we have this course, and that's why you need me, because I'm going to show you how to get Superhost in your first three bookings. If you miss out on your first three bookings, then it's going to take you another three months to even try to get it. So the more bookings you get that you're a Superhost, the better it is for you. So we got to, we got to get the wow. All right, because income results from accepting reservations and hosting guests. So some things, I'm going to give you some very easy things that you can implement. Buy a bottle of wine. Get a bottle opener. Put two glasses out on a little tray. Give them a little, little note that says, enjoy your complimentary bottle of wine upon their arrival. It's just nicely. A bottle of wine can cost you six bucks. It's still drinkable. All right, so um, no big deal. Uh, to put that little touch in there, uh, okay? In our uh, shared houses, we have a little greeting ceremony that people from all over the world come and they put their name and, and mark where they're from, and uh, then at the same time, they're learning about what they can do in the city, how we can help them. So it's their little greeting ceremony to welcome into the property. Um, if it's in a whole house, we have a guest book. Every room gets a welcome basket with water, earplugs, eye masks, com complimentary postcards, and pens. So, uh, it's, again, just niceties to have. If it's a whole house, when they come in, there's a chalkboard somewhere that says welcome uh, to the home with their name on it. Uh, we provide uh, uh, like a booklet uh, that has masks, menus, just like hotels do, okay? And we provide discount coupons. And all these discount coupons, you can actually go into any motel, hotel around the country, and they have racks of these discount coupons from attractions on them. Just go pick some up. Or if you get a cleaning lady from one of these hotels to work from, you ask her to bring some with you. But one of the great things you can do, is, especially if you're doing this remotely, is after they check in, give them a call just to see how they're doing. All right? And I bet you the only thing they're going to ask is what the Wi-Fi password is. But they just want to know that they're looked after and, and um, see that you respect them. They want to see you um, as happy, that, that you want them to appreciate your hospitality. You want to be seen as a super host. You want them to tell their friends. And people come back to the same places. So you want them to come back again. But you've got to leave, train them <coughs> Excuse me, to leave a stellar review, a five-star review. Nothing less than a five-star review will suffice. I got to teach you how to get that done, even if you not even in the property. Uh, it can all be done without setting foot in the property. But again, we got to strive for that five-star review. Anything else is is not going to work. So, what you got to learn from this business is again marketing. Three areas of focus is going to help you create a successful rental business. You got to market a great listing. Okay, people are scanning listings, they're scanning headlines. So 
that you got to think about how are you furnishing this property? What are the amenities you're adding to attract these people? And in the marketing, are there key words you can use? Uh, what are there special titles you can use to attract them? Okay, again, all marketing. And marketing has to be backed up with pictures, 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 and pictures. Okay, if you do that, you're going to get bookings. Okay, now just to show you an example here, this is one of our competitors on the left. Here we are on the right. Our competitor has one picture. Here's the bed you're going to be sleeping on in his ugly mug. Here's our one of our pro, one of the rooms you'll sleep in. You'll see like there's 15 pictures and a picture of our host. Okay, which one would you choose, especially considering it's a half the price? Guys, that's why it's so important to know how to do research and provide do the right types of listings to get bookings. Okay, because the extra tip I want to give you is that theming, theming is where you're going to make the big money, okay? So here's a shed. All we did was put some windows on it, put a door, framed it out a little bit inside, and now it's a tiny house, okay? It's not a shed. Stay in this tiny house movement. Try before you buy. This is a laundry room, which is now turned into the Golden Harvest Room or the Purple Zen Room or the California Slave Bed. You can see here our welcome basket here. This is our Hollywood Room. We have a Harry Potter Room. Okay, with a working magic wand. It goes, you can say, scary almost luminous, and it turns the light on and off. And, and for the kids, we have a welcome basket that looks like a treasure chest. <coughs> Copy of his book with his spectacles. If you want to stay in jail, we can theme it for jails. We have medical tourism. Uh, we have different themes to attract people. Okay, pictures are going, are, are key. You know, turn on those lights. Open the windows, okay? Let people see it's comfortable, it's safe, it's warm, it's, it's their home, and they can be happy. We've got to uh, evoke emotion. Um, color, color is another way to evoke emotion. It's, it's eye appealing, okay? Those, those, again, they want to feel comfortable, safe, warm, be home and happy, okay? This is uh, another picture of one of our shared properties where we put out throw pillows and blankets, you know, uh, just, again, for warmth and coziness. Um, <clears throat> inside the room, colorful pictures, upbeat, positive, right? So here's the Hollywood room. This is inside of that tiny house. Um, so many, many pictures to show them what they're going to get. We use fake plants. They're green. It looks airy. It looks fresh, full of life. Don't use pictures of dead plants in your room. All right, one less thing to worry about. Amenities, you gotta think about what else can I provide that makes them say, wow, I wanna stay here. So like our tiny house, we added California cruisers, dart boards, you know, they can um, have a whole host of things, you know. For Universal Studios, we, we theme things around Harry Potter. So theming, now that doesn't mean you have to go and put mini fridges and alarm clocks and TVs in each room. We don't do that. Mini fridges hum, it takes up extra space, it's an extra cost. One refrigerator for the whole house is good, just section it off. <coughs> Excuse me, most people will use their cell phone to wake up, don't put alarm clocks in there. Rather put good fast internet in there rather than TVs because most people will watch their own programs, Netflix and Hulu and that, Amazon, on their own device rather than TV. So, you know, we can cut costs, we can add better internet in there, um, and still give them, you know, a wow. Um, so really think about what they desire, how, what's the format you're going to put it in, what's the value they're going to get, and you want to tell them about it. You know, don't tell them about something and not deliver. Make sure that if you're going to tell them about something, you're going to deliver it. So, by the way, always get fast internet. Um, so, Again, I just said that, uh, how they get it, uh, what price they're going to pay, what value they receive. And in the course, we go over the perfect listing, the components. The longer the listing, the better, all right? And we'll, we'll even go over that listing with you. So some bonus tips for you for tonight only, all right? Um, we don't compete on price usually, but to get the initial attraction for our first three bookings, you only have to be $10 less than your <coughs> closest competitor for like on like to get people to take notice to book. Now, when you first book, the first 24 hours are crucial because Airbnb gives you this new shiny badge 
on it and they're going to throw all the traffic they have to your property and they want you to get bookings but if nobody's booking it because you have a lousy listing or no pictures or for whatever reason your pricing's off they're going to throw your listing to the very bottom of the pile for the next day so having your listing right your pricing right your amenities right is critically important and that's why again we have the course so you don't have to worry about making money okay remember we're going to teach you how to build your reputation and and write reviews and get those five star reviews all right and if you get five three star re I'm sorry three five star reviews in your first bookings you're going to get super host and you don't have to wait three months which means you're going to get more bookings and make more money all right so um, work with these bonus tips uh, if you're going to do this and we'll make sure when you get our course that you do <coughs> you don't have to provide breakfast it was one of the things we did in the beginning <coughs> because we thought our house was too far away from stuff and you know we did that for six months but it only really ran us fifty dollars a month to do so where we had coffee tea we had um, wheat bread peanut butter jelly Nutella bananas oranges and oatmeal that was it um, and our, our on-site host would set that up or our cleaning lady would set it up um, you know for the next day it really is very simple but after six months we stop most people just want the tea and coffee and they're out the door and they go so where they buy their own food and then you can share that so it's not a requirement to make food for people <coughs> excuse me when you start Airbnb credit your they post the credit cards you get paid automatically the day they check in well they it processes the day you check in and it goes into your account the next day so you don't have to worry about knowing how to deal with credit cards you don't have to worry about declining credit cards um, so very very simple it's fast so remember you only need two things to make money with Airbnb a steady flow of vacation and guests and great properties even if it's a couch okay we want to give them an experience they're looking for some place to stay that's different keys to finding a profitable location man if you can tap into the buzz or a niche you're going to do very well maybe it's year-round activities maybe it's medical tourism maybe it's events maybe it's weddings maybe funerals who knows but people come and travel all the time that's why there's hotels everywhere so you know just tap into and think of ways to do it better and we will definitely help you do that in our course but make sure there's conveniences nearby your grocery post office clothing store bank and a pizza shop and you're going to do just fine make sure your house is safe and secure as a landlord you got to have <coughs> carbon monoxide fire uh, detectors in there but uh, you know set up maybe a, a burglar alarm system for their safety I uh, put a video camera at the front door that could be a nest doorbell um, <coughs> or a ring doorbell. So these are things that make them feel secure and it's also going to make you feel secure too what's going on. And you have to turn on your utilities, can't get around it, but I can suggest you whatever you do, make sure you get the fastest Wi-Fi possible because people want that and if you don't, you're going to get dinged. So you might as well just get the fastest Wi-Fi. The key in, in the course that we have is really how do you automate all this? How do you run it by not actually being at the property? How do you systematize it so you work less and make more money? And that's why we have a course. And we have all the missing pieces for you to be very successful in this. Matter of fact, I'll show you in our course how you gain instant ability, how you dominate Airbnb, run this entire business from your cell phone, and you can do it in one to two hours a week. And to make 100 grand only working one to two hours a week, that's the lifestyle most people dream about. We have super highway to Airbnb success. I hope you enjoyed your time on the phone on this webinar today because I'm very passionate about this. This works. This will change your life. That's why we came out with the course, Double Your Rental Income, the Vacation Rental Profit System. So what's it cost? If you're not, if you're not a member of the RIA, it's $14.97. If you are a member, it's twelve ninety seven. You can call in and take a payment plan. Thirty, you know, half down now, half in thirty days. But you can make your money back in thirty days, if not sixty days. But if you 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 want to go here right now and get it, is you got to go to bigo.co forward slash Airbnb. And if you're that member and you want your two hundred dollars off, 
you got to use that coupon code 200 off. So again, it's bigo.co forward slash Airbnb. Now our course includes nine modules, which is the property selection system, how to choose the perfect location for your vacation rental, along with the worksheets. If, the, if it doesn't check off on the worksheet, don't move ahead, okay? We have the nightly rate pricing system. We have many ways to price out a property, okay? How to generate the bookings and revenue right away. If you follow our pricing system, you're gonna do extremely well. We talk about events, seasonal fluctuations, uh, competing against your competitors, all right? So the nightly rate pricing system is a great module so you can make more money. The experience creation system, those amenities I've talked about, the wow, okay? We're gonna show you which ones add more value, get more people clicking on your bookings. So that's, that's a great module. And if you don't own property, this is how you're going to go get property, how you can control it without owning it. What contracts you need to use, all the clauses you need, so you can do this without getting in any trouble, all right? We have that. So, don't tell me you don't have a property and you can't do this because I'm gonna show you how to get properties. We can lease option them, we can do subject to, we can rent them, we can do timeshare, we can do property management. This Anybody can do this, you just need the right contracts. You have your whole house setup system, what to furnish, how to decorate it, your furnishing checklist, and how to get free professional photography. That's right folks, free professional photography, but I'll teach you how to do that. And then we have the done for you marketing system how to navigate Airbnb's website, how to use search engine optimization to create a more powerful listing, and all the training videos will walk you through everything so you're not left guessing. But once you have the setup, you gotta automate, okay? So, three phases to automation. Mobile calendar management system. Track your guest comings and going, laptop or cell phone. The host-free greeting system. So in case you don't have an on-site host, how do you do this host-free greeting system? And how do you manage your whole business? So this is a powerful one-two punch. You can do this anywhere virtually on the planet. I live in South Carolina. My business is all over the United States. It doesn't matter. And even if you um, don't have property, I mentioned this is our newest module for property managers. You can make more money. You can get up to 25% of the gross. You can sign people up for 500 to 2,500 bucks by putting them in Airbnb, okay? Offering vacation rental management services to new or existing clients. Easy way to make money, okay? Existing landlords who are frustrated with tenants uh, or helping people get into this business, uh, you can make a ton of money. So again, the price is $14.97 for non-members, $12.97 for members, payment plan available. You're gonna have to call in for that. Um, you're going to make your money back 30 to 60 days. This is a business in us, folks. It's deductible. Your investment is protected. All right. This is a tax write off. So you got to go to big, bigo.co forward slash Airbnb.com. If you're a member, you can use the coupon code $200 off. Okay. We're going to give you some bonuses. I have a separate course called Time Gold. I'm going to teach you how to turn your unused weeks into quick cash. Remember, I turned one week into two weeks into $8,000. I'm going to show you how to do it in this course. This took two years to write because there's so much hassle we had to go through to figure it out. So it's worth it's every penny. It's worth $9.97. We sell it all day long at $9.97. You're going to get it free. Um, matter of fact, here's just two more prop timeshares I picked up, um, and they were free, um, taking over the title, just paying the resort fee, and I got two new uh, timeshares. I'm going to give you our profit software. You enter in your numbers, it's going to make some assumptions, and it's going to tell you this property is a go or no go, and it's going to tell you back, and it should tell you, pay back, you know, your upfront, your out of pocket cost, month two, break even. In month three, you're in the money. So that's how we roll in this business. And then we have the guest screening rules. The 10 screening rules, I, I shared a little bit about them, but you need these rules. If you don't go with the screening rules, you are going to lose. You're going to get a tenant from hell, all right? You also need quick response email templates. Don't recreate what we've took years to do. As soon as somebody has a query, Boom, your email templates go out, all right? We also have a welcome letter template and we have house rules. If you don't have house rules and they do something you don't like, you don't have a leg to stand on. 
All right, so how can you ask for security positive if you don't have house rules? So we have these for you to protect you. So don't try and reinvent the wheel, they're all there. And plus, we have the tax guide. We need to keep as much money as we can from Uncle Sam. So hallelujah, we have the tax guide for you and uh, that's gonna help you considerably put more money in your pocket. Plus, we do group coaching calls. That means once a month we get on the phone, we talk how to, especially right now, we're talking to a lot of people how to acquire more property without putting any money into it, you know, getting those, just getting control of properties and walking through the process. But you can bring your properties, we'll discuss them, we'll discuss amenities, whatever you need, we'll go for as long as we go to get those done. So that's a thousand dollar value. They go on all year long and it's once a month. So you're gonna get tonight the email templates, the welcome letter templates, the screening rules, the software, the timeshare gold mine, the group coaching calls. You get 60 days of unlimited email support with me. I'll even partner with you. So you're getting over $3,900 worth of value for it in the cost of the course. So you gotta ask yourself guys, can you follow a proven system I'm going to keep it simple and easy to do. I'll even partner with you for a portion of your profits, but you got to be ready to make money now. If you're not ready to make money now, then so what? You know, that's your loss. But Airbnb, you can make money quickly on this. If you want something different in your life, you, 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 you got to do something different. That's as simple as that. Airbnb is the way to go. If you don't do, do it with my course, I can guarantee you that this guy is going to show up at your door. You don't want this guest at your door. Believe me, how do we know? We've gone through the hassle, the heartbreak, and the trouble. So, you know, just, just avoid it. Get our course. Protect yourself. Let us teach you how to make money fast. You know, here's a guy who already had it. He, had, he thought he had Airbnb figured out. <coughs> and he goes, Duncan, we thought... We had you uh, and it figured out. Then you came up with a whole new plan. You know, hats up to you. Thanks for all your support. We literally doubled this guy's income again. So, guys, it's a jungle out there. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people trying to do this. But if you don't, you know, if you mess up, you lose. I know the light at the end of the tunnel. I can get you there. So, no excuses, guys, for not making money. If you want a mega bonus, I'll actually finance you. 30-year rental financing for landlords and I'll finance the startup cost for you per each room, all right? Because I know if you use my system, you'll be making the money back that you can pay back the loan. So again, this is the price, $14.97 for non-members, $12.97 for members, payment plan available, make your money back, it's a tax write-off, so oh, you gotta go right now to bigo.co forward slash Airbnb, and you got to use the coupon code 200 off if you want to use it now. But guys, this is the way to go. Start funding your passions as an Airbnb host. It will change your life for the better. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today. I'm going to hand the screen back to Dustin. Any questions, please feel free to ask before I go. Dustin, over to you. All right, I'm here. We got some questions for you. Okay. All right, this first one's from Angela Johnson. Can you talk about the steps you take to obtain a property, especially with no money down or similar options? Thank you, sir. All right, well, very simple. Like I mentioned, we have five different tactics for getting in the property. As a real estate investor, you're probably doing lead generation marketing anyway. So in your, in your normal offer process, you know, when, when you've, all, you've always been taught make three offers, you know, one, you know, should be all cash. If you don't have all cash, then we move to owner financing, which can be either be, you know, subject to or lease option. Uh, that would be one way where you could do it, you know, own, pure owner finance. But that, that would be if you're doing your marketing. If you're not doing any marketing, then I would suggest in our course, we have the guidelines for property selection and we do a straight rental. We just go to a property that looks like it would be a good performer and we talk to the landlord about renting it as a corporate rental. That's the other way. Another way is we go and we do other landlords and we talk to them about the benefits of Airbnb and we show them how to get into this business. We get a setup fee and we do the property management reservation services for them. And the other one is timeshare. 
timeshare. You can pick up on the secondary market on eBay. You know, you can pick it up for a, you know, a dollar and you would pay the maintenance fee and closing costs. So you'd probably have about $1,300 into picking up a timeshare in which you're going to make at least 4000 if not 8000 or more, more for every week that you pick up. I personally own 32 weeks of timeshare. So, um, and all of those were um, bought with no money out of pocket, except my uh, transfer of title cost. So, you know, between a hundred, actually I had $20, a hundred and uh, $300 was my most expensive one. So that's how you can do it. Easy peasy. All right. This next question is from Helen. How do you know if there are extra guests staying at your Airbnb? If you don't have an in-house host. Well, number one is they, that's part of the screening who is traveling with you. I want to know everybody's traveling with me. I will also have a video camera at the front door. Okay. Um, <coughs> so um, I have a cleaning lady or a service lady, depending how you do that. Um, so there's ways, ways you can check. All right. Now, I'm a, this is a follow-up question for me since you're talking about um, people staying there in the house. Do most of your properties have a stay-in host, a live-in host? Um, it depends on the style of house. So um, larger houses that we do have will all have a, um, a live-in host in, let me say this, in Los Angeles uh, because th that, we're, you know, the type of tourists we get in Los Angeles come, come from all over. Um, so in Los Angeles, we do. The properties I'm setting up in Orlando do not because they're coming to, you know, they're coming here in large groups as family and doing, um, you know, reunions. And so, you know, I have houses that will hold 16 people. Um, so those do not. Uh, so it really depends how I decide to set up that, that house. But the houses with an on-site host, they are cash cows, and they do provide uh, um, a way to keep the house always secure, and it also um, provides less risk in case of a, um, you know, a seasonal fluctuation. I always do have, you know, somebody paying money. All right. This next question is from Lavette. She says, this is beyond genius. My only concern is vacationers trashing your property. Is this common? No, not at all. Number one, you have the security deposit. So uh, for a room, you usually have a security deposit of 100 I'm sorry, for $50. For a, like a hot studio to a one-bedroom, I'll do 100 For a two-bedroom, uh, three-bedroom, I do from 200 to 400 uh, I've had properties in New York up to a thousand dollars security deposit because just the way I furnish the property. Um, now you also have the uh, Airbnb liability policy for theft vandalism, which you can claim against. But the other thing is, if you're doing your tenant screening, you have um, your your rules, of course. You have you're asking everybody who's going to stay there, so you want that you want them all verified, um, and then um, oh I lost my train of thought here. Oh, the review process is this. Remember, they can review you, but you review them. So if you review them and give them a bad review for trashing your property, nobody is ever going to accept them again on air, which would be a major loss. So everybody's pretty much on their good behavior. All right. This next question is from Jessica Reeves. Are you booked in your property or properties for the Super Bowl? A person can make great money in February of 2019. Do you have colleagues that have started accepting deposits for that time of year yet? Just curious. Yes. Let me tell you about a colleague in Chicago for the World Series. Penthouse Apartment made one million dollars over the course of the World Series in Chicago. Over a million. Now, how we did it at a top property, 
He also partnered with other people, such as he partnered with limousine companies. He partnered with a charter jet company. He partied, uh, He partnered with uh, catered chefs. So he was making all this partnering with these people and arranging things. So um, you, that's another part of Airbnb called Airbnb experiences because not only do they want to stay on your property, they want experiences. So th you can look this up in the magazine, Google the $1 million Airbnb um, World Series host. So Super Bowl, yes. I don't know, you know, if Georgia will ever have a Super Bowl team, you know, not unlike Philadelphia, but, uh, you know, yes. <laughs> yeah, because when you were down in Tampa, you mentioned um, you need to know what big events are coming to your town throughout the year. Because if you allow people to book ahead. Right. So like in New York, events, yeah, yeah. So, so like in New York, um, you know, for the New York Marathon as an example, or New Year's, you know, these people are booking a year in advance, or we have another one, Coachella, we have a house in Coachella, you know, they're booking, you know, a year in advance, so you need to know that, and then those prices just get jacked, I mean, ridiculous amounts of money. Yep. So, yeah, I tried, from, I tried to book a hotel um, room or something so we were looking for right. New York. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, you know, these are things that we have to teach you and how to, you know, plan for that. All right. This next question is from Nicole. Can you please repeat the web page name for the market review? You were breaking up a little bit throughout the call where your voice is getting a little garbled. Okay, so I use, um, I use three, okay, so there's three sites I use to do for research. One, you want to start you doing, and we cover the research greatly in our course, um, but uh, the first one, you want to use Airbnb in itself using search methods that we teach you. Then you have airdna.co, and then you have mash, like the word mashed potato, but not potato, of course, mash, and then visor, D-I-S-O-R, mashvisor.com. So we use those three sites to teach you the research and start honing in with our nightly rate pricing system. All right, this next question is from Helen. Will the $40 coupon or the $50 coupon be applicable if I've already stayed in an Airbnb before? Nope. I am an Airbnb ambassador, and I'm the only one that can hand those out. So, no, if you've already signed up with Airbnb, it's too late. It's for new people. All right. Then her, her follow-up to that was, or if I've set up a host account already but never went live. Uh, uh, try it. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, it's worth a try. I haven't had that one yet, but uh, try it. All right. This next question is from Doug. And he's asking about VRBO. When renting through VRBO, do you pay hospitality taxes of 12 to 14 percent on your income tax? So Airbnb will charge the hospitality tax in most cities over and above the nightly rate. So in takes care of that, so I don't have to. If they're not working with the Mary, then of course you're going to have to price that in. All right, and hopefully you guys could hear that answer. It did get a little bit garbled there. All right, um, this next question is from Helen again. In the beginning of your listing, should you have all extra fees like cleaning, extra gas, and security deposit? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you don't have to put it at the beginning of your listing, but um, at the end, they do. They are presented with a summary of um, those fees. All right, this next question is from the same person, Helen. I don't know if I quite understand the question. Maybe you will. 
Do you suggest for a landlord to allow someone to rent their property for Airbnb? Why or why not? Well, if I was a landlord, I'd do it myself. That's why I like to control property because, um, you know, I know how to do it. But um, for landlords who don't understand Airbnb, and I just want to make, and, and I want to keep all the profits for myself, then I'm going to approach them as I would like to rent a property for rental and use my own contract. Um, and keep all the profits themselves and they see the potential in it, then you want to get them in a property management services where they keep 80%, you keep 20 and you do the work. But yeah, I, I think, you know, that's how you make more income. I mean, that, yeah, I want to make as much money as possible for my house. All right. This next question is a great one from Joseph Elam. Can we hear more about how you acquired the 36 weeks of timeshare, specifically the transfer of title cost? Great question. Um, how did you get all those timeshares? Timeshares are so easy to get because you you can ask a majority of people, do they own timeshare? Do they use them? Um, and do they hate paying maintenance fees? Well, if you don't use it anymore, you're not paying a maintenance fee, hey, could I take it over from you and let me pay it? All right? So um, I do a lot of marketing. I say a lot of marketing. I use eBay. eBay, there's a ton of them. You just set up what searches you want. I know the resorts. I know, well, I, I know the companies that um, are the best ones to work with versus the ones you don't want to work with. You know, I know where you want points from versus weeks. So after learning that, it's simply a matter of setting up searches and looking for those people. And then when you uh, address it, um, you either some of these companies have on-site title transfer offices or you just do it through your, your county recorder like this particular one. Uh, I just go to the Orange County Comptroller Recorder's office. I send in a, a title and record it just like I would do, um, you know, a subject to deal. Um, each, each, um, each county has a different deed recording fee. Uh, each resort has a, a transfer fee. It could be as little as 100. It could be as much as 300. Um, and that, then you just start paying the yearly maintenance. Um, I, at the same time, when I make my purchase offers for timeshare, if they have any timeshare weeks that have been space banked, I say, that's mine too. I don't care. You know, hey, I'm buying your two weeks, you know, taking over. I want all the time booked already so I can put that and make money from that also. All right. This next question from Sophie. She says, my city only allows Airbnb, Airbnb for owner-occupied houses. Is there a way to go, to go around this? By the way, Sophie, where are you from? send it in via the Q&A interface. So wherever she's from, she says, only allows owner-occupied Airbnb. Do you know a way around that? Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean there's a couple of different things. There, let, let's say, first of all, focus on the opportunity and go get a house where you can do it, okay? That's the easiest answer. It doesn't matter. I live in South Carolina. My houses are, the majority of them are in L.A. Where 11 cities in L.A. say you can't do it, but there's 88 other cities in L.A. And you say where I can so I focus on the opportunity, number one. If it's, if it's an owner finance, if it's an owner-occupied house, well, do it in a room in your house or put an on-site host in that property. Uh, you know, whatever your local laws are, obey them, but focus on the opportunity and, and, and keep it. And again, it depends on your risk tolerance level. The big thing here is a lot of these cities, they don't have any way to enforce what they're saying. But that's why, again, we have name management not to get busted from your neighbor to let them know what's going on. All right. By the way, Sophie said she's from Denver. Oh, I just spoke in Denver. Tons. There are so many Airbnbs in Denver. It's ridiculous. So that's and where they're not all occupied houses. I wouldn't think so. But Sophie, do your yeah. research. I mean, you do the research. So enforcement's another. 
even so, outside of Denver, there's plenty of area. Um, I mean, there's Airbnb. Again, where did I just stay? Uh, Loveland's. You can you can go do them in Loveland. You know, plenty of people stay in there. Go in the tons of them. All right, we've got about four more questions, uh, and we can wrap this thing up. Uh, Shauna wrote in and asked. Actually, we have a few more on Facebook. I'll get to. So we only have a few more. Uh, but Shauna wrote in and asked, "How do you convince an owner to allow you to rent a property for Airbnb?" Very simply, we go for uh, in our course. We teach you three different methods, but the easiest one we found is just to say, "Hey, we're interested in renting your property as a corporate rental." Is that any other negotiation uh, tactics there? A corporate rental is wise. Hey, a corporation is going to be paying you, coming and going. I'm not going to go into a lot of stuff. It's a corporate rental. We have we have we have executives coming and going, and we do market to executives. I mean, Airbnb has a whole different site just for uh, renting to corporate uh, executives. So, and they pay more money. So, I'm not lying. All right. Kevin wrote in and asked, my partner and I have a joint venture and an LLC. Can we sign up for one course and have you train us both? If you're on, yes, if you're on the call at the same time. So you both get on the call. Uh, we both, yeah, I, I, I have one point of contact and you can share that information. Um, but yes, yeah, I don't want to be doing for coaching calls sort of thing. You know, I just want to keep it, you know, tight. Right. I know you do that for uh, uh, spouses as well in the same way. Right. All right. Then P Patricia wrote in and asked the exact same thing. I have a business partner. Could you train us both for the, for the registration fee? So you just answer yeah, that. So what I'll do, Dustin, is this. Uh, the, so we have group monthly coaching calls and we have unlimited email support, but all, I will make a unannounced bonus uh, on this webinar only uh, is that I will do a private coaching call with everyone who buys tonight. So if it's two of you who are an LLC or have a partner, uh, that private coaching call would be with both of you together at the same time so we can knock out a lot of these questions and, and that. All right. And then Kevin asked, what are some of the better areas you found for Airbnbs? Well, that's covering our property selection system and, again, doing the research. I mean, very easy. Um, you know, the sites are out. gave you one, Mash Visor. It shows you where the hot spots are. Uh, you know, you highlight within a city where those hot spots are. You do research on Airbnb, you can probably find a confluence of Airbnbs in specific areas. Anywhere around a tourist spot, convention center, um, a buzz. You know, it's easy peasy. You know, it's just a matter of, you know, you're going to be bold enough to do it. Sounds good. Sounds, I mean, there's more than likely someplace close by, Kevin, to where you live that you could do this just fine. Um, I was at the beginning investors group, the live one in Atlanta last night. We were talking about this privately afterwards, talking about you doing this webinar tonight. And mm -hmm. uh, I just want to bring this up and let you address it because I know it came up down in Tampa. The gentleman that I was talking to last night was worried about Airbnb in his area being legislated out of existence. Oh, who cares? Who cares? Because there's the United States is a great big place. Dustin, literally, I have places in Gatlinburg. I have places in Chattanooga. I, I have four places down here in Orlando. I have 16 in, in Los Angeles. Who the hell cares where it is if you can set it up and do it remotely? You know, if somebody's limited in their thinking that they only have to do it right next door to themselves, they're not focusing on opportunity. you got to figure out a way how to make this work. That's, that's the bottom line. Yeah, his, his, his point and or concern was, what if I get all these Airbnbs wherever, wherever in the country, and suddenly, you know, the local uh, – politicians get pissed off or whatever and legislated out of existence. Now he's, he says, you know, I'm stuck holding 12 Airbnbs that I can't run out anymore. What do I do? 
that was kind of his um, well, you, concern. Well, you put him in. You put him back into your long-term rental portfolio. Yep. Because the better way to look at this is the better way to look at it is what if they're not? And after three yeah. years, say you own the property, and after three years of history of income with Airbnb, now you don't sell the house. You sell it as an ongoing business for 10 times your earnings. Right. Oh, yeah. You forgot to mention that. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Now, instead of selling a house that's only worth $200,000, hey, I have a business that nets you $100,000 a year. How much is that worth to you? That's a $500,000 business. Boom. You get the house plus the income. It's $500,000, dude. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. And the only reason I, I mentioned what he was saying last night was because it reminded me of a story you told down in Tampa about a place in Manhattan. Yeah, so in Manhattan, we, so, yeah, Manhattan, New York is screwy. So, you know, we were in this property making $1,000 a night. We were in it for $8,000 a month. We can't do it anymore. Well, it just went back into our rental pool, and now, okay, so we're renting it out at $12,000. That's what a normal rent for a three-bedroom apartment goes for in New York, in, at, on, in Columbus Circle, $12,000 a month. We were making thirty, but you know what? So we're in it for eight, and now we're only making $4,000 cash flow on that property. Who cares? And that was the point, and that's why I asked that question, you know, for people out there that may be scared about the legislation, is that you can still rent it out, worst case. Yeah, crap. I mean, the rental market's still good, you know. Yep. My good friend David down in Tampa, um, whom you met while you were there, I do believe, uh, turned 13 of his rentals into Airbnb and doubled his oh, hey. income. So, worst it's, case, it's, it's, so he, it out he goes back to rental. Yeah, exactly. All right. This question came in from Facebook. And you've sort of already addressed it, but it's one of the few questions that came in on Facebook, so I thought I'd answer it. from Tony. He said, what locations do I need to look for to find a good Airbnb property? Yeah, I already answered that. You know, and plus, we have the whole property selection system in the uh, course. Um, and, you know, I, it's buzz, conventions, you know, look. And niche, like I said, we have – Students who are just doing medical tourism in Baltimore, you know, you're close to John Hopkins. You know, there's a huge need for housing for traveling nurses, doctors, families coming in to treat sick ones. We have a we have a house <coughs> close to a, a beautiful garden in L.A. and they just do Asian weddings there. So all these you know Chinese people come in just to go to weddings there. Um, you know, there's another one for funerals. You know, what whatever. You know, people want. They want the tiny house. It doesn't matter. You know, figure out what the niche, what, and we help you go through this in the course. Yep. All right. We got three questions left. You can uh, answer them quickly. This mm -hmm. is from Toby. Is the income from Airbnb considered earned income or passive income? All right. I am going to answer this question first with the um, introduction. Is I am not a tax attorney. I have no liability here. But in my opinion, this is earned income because I'm working it as a business. Very good. All right, this question from Jessica. Does the property have to be zoned as a business as opposed to residential for Airbnb? Residential. Unless you have local laws that say you need a business license or it has to be zoned resident. You know, those are local laws you're going to have to look up. But Perfect. for me, residential. All right, this is a good question from James. Uh, this is his first question of the night. Hi, guys. My name is James. I'm a new investor in real estate. My question is, how do you determine the right price for an Airbnb room or house per night, per week, per month as, as a new investor? How do you determine your pricing model, Duncan? Oh, that's a great question because we have a whole module on that called our nightly rate pricing system. So um, you, first, we have you do the research. We have a very detailed plan how to do research, look for your competitors, look for like for like, and what amenities we pro you're going to provide and what value they have to price it right. Uh, so this is why we have the course to do that. Um, it, and oh, I am going to suggest you never use Airbnb smart pricing because they're always going to shortchange you. 
All right. Well, that's all the questions we had for tonight, man. I really appreciate you being here. I want to remind you right. if they want to sign up for your home study course, double your rental income with Airbnb, just go to bigo.co, bigo.co slash Airbnb, bigo.co slash Airbnb. It's there on the screen. Use coupon code $200 off to take $200 off. So, Duncan, I uh, really appreciate it. Again, it's a really fascinating topic. I I'm sure you remember back in the day before Airbnb, our good friend Nick Sedoti. Remember him? Yep, yep, yep. He used to always talk about how, you know, double, triple, quadruple your income by renting houses out by the room. Mm -hmm. Now along comes Airbnb and once again gives us the opportunity to double, triple your normal monthly rental income. Right. So, so um, you know what? I, I mean, Nick has a great thing for special needs housing and uh, assisted living and all that. But I tell you what, the government regulations in that business now are so, they just suck. And uh, you need more help than you do on Airbnb. You'll make far more. And I, I went head to head with him and uh, uh, another guy, Gene Garano, showing the numbers from an Airbnb versus senior care, assisted living, special mm -hmm. needs. And it just blows them out of the water. Exactly. And that's the, one of the reasons I never got into it back then in the day when he was pitching that and why this sounds so much more appealing. Mm -hmm. So again, I really appreciate you being here tonight and sharing all this insight with us. Guys, if you like what you hear, Duncan's one of the only people I know that's actually have a course on how to do this where you don't have to do it all by yourself. So if you're new and looking for in this you look for more information or this is something you're considering doing wherever you live, check out his course, Double Your Rental Income with Airbnb, bigo.co slash Airbnb, coupon code $200 off to take $200 off. Duncan, I really appreciate you being here, man. Good thing, Dustin, man. I wish everybody the best. This is, it's fun, it's life-changing, and it's a ton of money, and it allows me finally to chase all my passions and travel all over. Uh, so guys, this is great, you know, and I'll help you help you through it. And my partner Sue, we're together on this thing, man. So uh, you know, we have lots of successful students already performing. Just take that first step, guys. Yeah, it's a very sexy topic, very sexy business. I mean, it's and it seems like it's very, very, very profitable. So it's one uh, I'm looking into myself to do in the very near future, you know. So I appreciate you sharing it with me and all of our listeners. Thank you so much, Duncan. I look right, forward to seeing you soon, my friend. All right. Take care. You have a good evening. Good night and God bless everyone. We'll see you next month, fourth Tuesday at 7 p.m. <laughs>